Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to another Ruby reaction. Um, we're doing episode 3 of volume 3 and this is It's Brawl in the Family. Um, and this is obviously relating to this mysterious transporter that has arrived that Weiss is so interested in. It's obviously a member or members of her family. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be this mysterious sister. Uh, winter. I, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I'm just quite intrigued as to how they're going to portray this elder sister. I'm assuming she's an elder sister and that she's already graduated from uh, the academies or whatever academy she went to. But uh, I'm interested. Last episode we saw so many new characters. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous. And I did look through the credit sequence at the end to take a note of their names, but I'm really unsure of which ones are going to be important and which ones we're not actually going to see again. So I'm going to reserve any theories about any of these new characters until I know their importance in the in the series. Um, that shouldn't be too long, I should imagine. But wow. I mean, some of the fight scenes were fantastic. Um, we saw Nora and Pira just being total badasses, as of course they are. But we got to see them being it. <laughs> it was just fantastic. Nora is just a brilliant character. And we, we actually got to find out what her semblance is. Uh, it is very much as I expected, sort of electricity based, but I didn't realise she could sort of supercharge herself through other people's um, energy, sort of like absorbing energy. Um, doesn't one of the others do that as well? I can't remember which one now. Oh my word, there's so many characters and so many references and Simil uh, similes and oh, all sorts it's hard to keep track of sooner or later I'm going to have to do a, a, a video specially dedicated to all my theories and trying to work it all out in my head but right now I'm just going to go along for the ride so who are we going to find out We, I, I'm, I'm suspecting that the guy in the pub is the mysterious uh, Uncle Crow that Ruby mentioned way 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 back in the first episode of the first volume um, and I'm assuming that this transporter is bringing Weiss's sister aside from that I'm just hoping for more fights uh, I'm hoping we're going to get to see some of the characters we've already seen again uh, especially that girl that uh, she, she was in the tree firing a uh, sniper rifle type thing I thought uh, she was quite cool who else was there um, that I really liked no that's her again oh yes Neptune's two Neptune and Sung we only really saw those two so we've met the teammates, uh, some guy with red hair, half shaven, and a sword, uh, kind of piratey. I remember when they were fighting, he, his theme sort of took on a very piratey sort of motif. And we have some guy with a huge, huge, like broadsword. So a wide but short sword um, apart from that he seems to have tattoos or something or is that just supposed to be represented of a hairy chest I don't know um, aside from that I think those two characters are going to be important uh, who else have we got here yeah Oh yes, the, the girl team. They were very interesting. The team that um, Team Sung were fighting. 
Nebula Violetta. Yeah, see, I really don't know who, which, which I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to find out, aren't I? And let's get on with this. Paul in the family. Yes, now I remember why I think it's winter. It's because she's in the credits. Winter. Yeah. Wait. Your sister? Winter! Winter, I'm so happy to see you. Oh, your presence honors us. <laughs> All formal. Beacon, it's been a long time. The air feels different. I mean, it is fall, so yeah, it's probably colder. <laughs> so, what are you doing here? Classified. Oh, right. Well, how long are you staying? Classified. Of course. Oh dear, she's important, isn't she? A bit too self-important. Oh, this is nice. I think. You're going to love it here. I know you travel a lot, but so much of Beacon is different from Atlas. Vale, too. The government and school are completely separate. Can you believe it? I I'm more than familiar with how this kingdom handles its bureaucracy. That is not why I came. Right. I'm sorry. Nor did I come here to watch my own blood fail so miserably in battle. Oh, but charming. I have no choice in the matter. But we won. Only a novice would refer to that as a victory. I counted at least three strikes missed. Leave us. <sighs> How have you been? Oh, splendid! Thank you for asking. I'm actually in the very top ranking of our sparring class. The rest of my studies are going wonderfully, too. I'm... Silence, you boo! I don't recall asking about your ranking. I asked how you've been. Are you eating properly? Have you taken up any hobbies? Are you making? That's a hell of a bump on her head. Well, there's Ruby. <laughs> uh, how old did she get here? Oh, if I knew it was that simple. I see. So this is the leader you wrote of. How appropriately underwhelming. Ah. Uh, oh, she is a total bitch. Greetings, I know she's supposed to be cold, to thank you for emotionless, but she's master. a total bitch. She makes Weiss seem almost I have friendly. With the general and your headmaster. But seeing as I'm early, why don't you take me to your quarters? Really? Yes. I wish to inspect them and make sure they are up to my personal standards. Of course. Just so you're aware, the bunk beds only look unstable. Bunk beds? <laughs> Wait, uh, I mean, I will. But they are they still got those bunk beds. <laughs> Man, you can really tell the extra budget they had in this by this time. Yeah, I'm talking. They've used you. it well. Nice I'm, I'm warming to the animation now. Halt. Talking to? Shh, shh, shh. Not you. Hey. You. Interesting. So the gaudy ship of yours in town. I guess you're here too. I'm standing right before you. So it would seem. <laughs> you realize you just destroyed Atlas military property. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. See, I mistook this for some sort of sentient garbage. I don't have time for your image. He has a cross around his neck. Crow. Wait, you two know each other? Jeez, you Atlas specialists think you're so special, don't you? It's in the title. Well, you know what you really are? Bunch of sellouts. Just like your boss. I'm not sure what you think you're implying, but I've heard enough. Oh, I heard too. I heard old Ironwood finally turned his back on Ozpin. Ozpin? Weiss, oh. it's time for you to go. What? Listen to Big Sister, Weiss. 
She'll protect you. Just like Atlas is gonna protect all of us, huh? If you won't hold your tongue, then I will gladly remove it for you. All right, then. Ooh. Come take it. <laughs> Drunk as hell. I think he's still fine. And that is a hell of a sword. Yay! He's his uncle. Oh, uncle. They're going at it some, aren't they? Run up that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's not a uh... <laughs> see, I've got a clockwork sword or something. Oh, nice. Destroying the courtyard. Wow, that's a big lift. Oh, wow. into a whip. I don't know. Oh. General Ironwood, sir. What in the world do you think you're doing? He started Penny. the altercation, sir. That's actually not true. She attacked first. Is that right? And you. What are you doing here? I could be asking you the Is same he not thing. I now now he's, he's a teacher. There is a second like a junior fight school or something, just around the corner at the Coliseum that I can assure you has better seats and popcorn. Break it up, everyone. We will take care of this mess. Let's go. He's a teacher at Signal, isn't he, Crow? <laughs> it's great seeing Penny, even if only for a second. Word, please. Oh yeah, I forgot. Glinda can just put everything back together again. Did kind of tear up our courtyard. Yeah, I did. Get you later, kid. And suddenly, your recklessness makes sense. You're just mad because he whooped, but that was a draw at best. What were you thinking? If you were one of my men, I would have you shot. 
If I was one of your men, I'd shoot myself. his behavior. I knew that line was coming. Certainly didn't help the situation. He was drunk. He's always drunk. What? Crow, why are you here? You've been out of contact for weeks. You can't just go dark like that in the field. I'm not one of your special operatives, Jimmy. General. Whatever. You sent me to get intel on our enemy, and I'm telling you, our enemy is here. We know. Oh. Oh, you know. Well, thank oh, goodness I? I'm out there risking my life to keep you all informed. Crow, communication's a two-way street, pal. You see this? That's the send button. They had reason to assume you'd been compromised. And I have reason to assume you don't need to be here. Seriously, <laughs> who invited her? Schnee will discuss this incident back on my ship. But sir... Winter, leave. Oh, yes, sir. harsh. Infiltrator isn't just another pawn. They're the one responsible for Autumn's condition. Autumn's what? condition? Who's Autumn? Despite what the world thinks, we're not just teachers or generals or headmasters. The people in this room, the leaders of the other two academies, we're the ones that keep the world safe from the evils no one even knows about. It's why we meet behind closed doors, why we work in the shadows. So you tell me, James, when you brought your army to Vale, did you think you were being discreet, or did you just not give a damn? Discreet wasn't working. I'm here because this is what was necessary. You're here because Ozpin wanted you here. He made you a part of this inner circle and opened your eyes to the real fight that's in front of us. And I am grateful. Oh, well, you've got a real funny way of showing it. The people of Vale needed someone to protect them. Someone who would act. When they look to the sky and see my fleet, they feel safe. And our enemies will feel our strength. <laughs> you, you think they're scared of your little ships? I've been out there and I've seen the things she's made, and let me tell you... They are fear. And fear will bring the grim. A guardian is a symbol of comfort. But an Who are they talking about? It's a symbol of conflict. There's an energy in the air now. Maybe torture it wasn't the leader of them. Smart. Maybe this this autumn. It's, it's the size of our defenses. What is it we're expecting to fight? Because there's some some female called Autumn out there that's behind all the uh, the the dust stealing and all that. So then I reckon Cinder would, would be her daughter. I suggest we find our guardian. Because I've always likened Cinder sure? to a very Autumn that hair used a person. That smelled like my dad after a long day. It was him. What do we do? Nothing. We stay the course. They have no idea who we are. So we have no reason to worry. Besides, the last of the heavy lifting is being taken care of, thanks to our clever little friend. Uh, speaking of which, it appears we have a new access point. Anywhere good? You could say that. Oh, of Go course, they laid I'll that. Everything for tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. She it. programmed that computer, didn't she? She put a bit of spyware into it. Let's give the crowd a good fight. Oh, oh wow. The randomization Coco Adele and Coco Ladies Adele, and yeah. Your double tournament lineup! Yeah, to shoot him. Okay, so I'm thinking, right, they're talking about some evil boss, the big boss, the one that was controlling Torchwick and all the others. Um, and they said something about Autumn, uh, uh, her condition, Autumn's condition. 
so I'm thinking that this autumn is the big boss and Cinder is her daughter um, and they've put that spyware I've completely forgotten about Cinder's little infiltration into the computer rooms of Beacon and it seems that she's put some sort of Trojan or a spyware into it that she's controlling everyone Ooh. and now I'm starting to think that this team um, coffee are going to be very important now we've already got the Coco Adele Coco Chanel yeah it makes sense we know that Velvet is based or inspired by the Velveteen Rabbit but the other two hmm I don't know I'm gonna to have to think hard about that I still haven't got their names properly yeah it's all going afoot and uh, there's battles with battles. it's very complicated storyline now and I've, what I've heard is that Monty Hoom and Rooster Teeth had before Monty Hoom passed away they had fleshed out the the basic plot lines and episode guides for 10 or more series so I'm glad to say that we're still in Monty Hume's vision of his own story and it hasn't you know the narrative hasn't been taken on by somebody else we're still in Monty Hume's vision and what a visionary animator and storyteller he is or was anyway thank you for watching I'll catch up with you in the next episode will be the world of remnant remnant <laughs> world of remnant um, I'm gonna give that a look I'll see you then or I'll see you in season four uh, in episode four till then catch you later bye bye